Hey there, investing feels overwhelming right now, doesn't it? So complicated, so many decisions, but leaving your money in the bank is not a great idea. It's losing value every single day. So if it's stressing you out and driving you nuts, why not invest smarter with Noble Gold Investments? Precious metals are simple and real. There isn't a company on the stock market today that was around 2000 years ago, but gold was. It's always been there through wars, disasters, and turmoil. Reliable, dependable, and authentic. That's why you can't go wrong with precious metals. They've always had your back. Noble Gold Investments American-based experts will show you how to set and forget your IRA or 401k. You'll get a dedicated professional assigned to you. No hassle, no call centers. This month, Noble Gold Investments is giving a free quarter ounce gold standard coin with every qualifying IRA investment. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com to claim your gold coin. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. It is the year 2017, and a total eclipse of the sun is about to begin. The sun currently looks like a crescent moon at this point. We are right on the edge of a total eclipse in Carbondale, Illinois. It was spectacular. Anthony, it's a party. You know, the clouds moved in for a moment, and I thought it's going to ruin this yes. party, but the forces of darkness united and did we something stand here good. For Boom. Here we go. It, the, this, the roar is starting to build here as we get closer and closer. The moon will fully block out the sun here. All that will be seen around it is a sort of corona. You One are almost minute. in it's total not darkness. Quite here. Uh, we have gone into complete darkness. I'm speechless. I'm literally speechless. Millions of Americans looked up as darkness descended in the middle of the day. Crowds erupted in Carbondale, Illinois, where the darkness lasted longer than nearly anywhere else in the country. Hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024. We're healthy, we're wealthy, we're whole, we're free, we're winning. It's the day of the total solar eclipse in 2024. Uh, probably one of the most hyped event of, events of the year. Uh, we're going to talk about it, but mainly uh, we're going to focus on something really, really important, something for everybody to remember today and moving forward. I want to welcome everybody on YouTube, on Rumble, and on X. Welcome in a live chat. Uh, so many familiar names and faces. So good to see you all. Uh, thank you for tuning in, my friends. All righty. So um, we looked at a little bit of footage from 2017. Uh, there was a certain kind of hype. I want to quickly address what really stood out in the um, sort of the, the period leading up to today, why a lot of us talked about it and why I, I, I would every single time I would talk about it again before we go into a really, really, really important perspective here. Never before. And I went back, I went back and I, I looked at previous uh, eclipses and events, mass gatherings and whatnot. I could not find an event that had so many states and counties declare states of emergency and disaster declarations, okay? So this definitely caught my attention and it caught the attention of our friends, uh, you know, that, that used to be high, high up in the military and they said the same thing. Here's my opinion, solely my opinion. I don't think that we will see anything other than moments of uh, darkness during the day, which is unusual. If you're not somewhere, uh, you know, in northern Norway where, you know, they have or even further up in Scandinavia and other places in the world and even northern Canada, of course, where you have polar day and polar night. But I think other than that, we won't see anything that will probably stand out. There might be a few problems with congestion, traffic, people, whatnot, but I don't think there will be any huge event that that will sort of flash out of this. What I do think, and here's my opinion, I think the states. The counties uh, used this because they had they had now almost two months where they declared this uh, emergency. They used this in order to do things that they usually couldn't do, put things in place, move things around. This is sort of how 
governments operate, right? They use Windows and then then they do that. I'm I'm absolutely calm. Nature is very calm. We were in the in the woods yesterday, in the woods this morning. Animals are all calm. So that you know that shows me. I don't think there's anything to worry about. However, people are fearful. And there's multiple reasons on the outside why they are fearful. And that's what I really want to talk about. I really want to put a perspective in place that will help you if you have been fearful lately or you're looking fearful into the future. And this is really what we can gain from this. Now, there's another thing that we did for the first time ever is we invited people in to do a um, a guided meditation that was it was it wasn't about the eclipse per se it was dedicated because we have heightened energy during uh, today we have heightened energy and there will be heightened energy um and, and so when you use this time constructively creatively positively look and, and envision uh it has greater impact when people do it together it has greater impact when we connect with our highest aspects it has greater impact so what i would encourage you to do if you feel inspired we put the link to the meditation in the description. You can do it whenever you want to. It's going to be there whenever you click on it. Uh, it's free of charge completely. It's in our locals community. You just have to create a, an account that's free too. And then you can use this however you wish to. Thank you for all of those who have joined us since Friday and done the meditation. Your comments, your emails uh, were absolutely heartwarming and beautiful. Thank you for sharing this. Okay. So I want to talk about fear, where it comes from what happens and how we get out of it because i think that's a, a perfect opportunity for this and for that i want to show you a little graphic here okay so um this seems like a little out of place but trust me we'll get there this is sort of our state of consciousness when we enter this life right before we enter this life we're not a body we don't have attachments we are we're, we're nothing really but consciousness before we come here right and so once we come here something begins to happen let me show you bear with me you, i think you're gonna like this once we get to the end of this see when when we enter this world and this i will tell you how this pertains to the eclipse too when we enter this world what starts is sort of a funnel and for those of you <laughs> who are too young to remember what funnels used to be used for. We, we use them to put oil in our engines and, and we use them in the kitchen. I'm not talking about a digital funnel, a sales funnel. But here's consciousness moves into this world program. And see, it's very, very wide. It's very, very expanded. It's this almost infinite consciousness. And then it moves through this funnel here. And that's the world and the program. And as you can see, it's wide up there and it gets narrower as we go down. So this is school. This is uh, what our elders teach us. This is what history teaches us. Anything that it pertains to the world programming. And so consciousness moves through here. And the more it moves through this funnel of programming, the more contracted it becomes. So consciousness starts to forget itself. We start to forget about who we truly are. Okay. So then. When we get through this funnel in this world program, we come out and we start carrying labels. You know, maybe maybe you're a Baptist, maybe you're a Hindu, maybe you're not religious, maybe you're a hairstylist or an MSNBC viewer, maybe you you belong to the middle class, you're a Titans fan, you're a travel junkie. You have all these um, you have all these labels. And because our consciousness, as it comes through the world funnel, tracks and becomes smaller and smaller, and we forget about it, we start identifying solely with these labels. So we're attached to these things, right? So we're attached to being a hairstylist. We're attached to being uh, a, a Titans fan. We we build literal cults around it, by the way, and we we almost become this. Now this is where fear kicks in. See, when you are expanded consciousness, that which you truly are, an infinite being, right? This is an experience that we have, but we're an infinite being. When you are that, you don't know fear. But when you are these labels 
and identify as these labels. Then you have all kinds of attachments, right? Attachments to things, attachments to status, attachment, attachments to uh, riches, attachments to how people perceive you. What else? Outcomes. Of course, to outcomes. So you are in a state of limitation. So you go, you know, I am, I, I'm a hairstylist. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And if something extraordinary, good or bad were to happen, things would change, right? And so when we have such a mass event, like it's been hyped, like this, this uh, eclipses, and people are so identified with their labels, then they tend to look at it. What if something bad happens? What if we have an attack during this? Or what if we have an earthquake? Or what if we have, and they project all kinds of scenarios, right? And the fear that people have comes because they have forgotten. That's where it comes from. They've forgotten what they really are. That they are infinite consciousness. They are not these labels. You are not these labels. You might live through these labels or you might express them in a certain way while you're in this physical experience, but you are not those labels. So what happens when you go through this programming and something happens in your life that shakes you, that inspires you, that that rattles you, whatever, something beautiful starts to happen. And that is what we call the awakening. And that is the funnel upside down, as you can see. Narrow consciousness, because it's attached to all the labels and the bills and the tax forms and the sort of the burdens of our matrix reality, when that self, that disconnected self, begins to awaken through whatever experience, it goes through the re reverse funnel through the awakening funnel. And the more that it goes through that funnel, the wider it becomes again. It begins to remember, you and I and everybody begins to remember who we really are. We begin to lose our attachments to the labels. And we begin to experience life from a broader perspective, right? So then as we move through this awakening, what is a result is expanded consciousness. It goes beyond the boxes, beyond the labels, beyond the religion, beyond the sports fans and political castes and, and uh, income brackets. It goes way beyond that. And we find ourselves in a different state of awareness. And in that state of awareness, we have no fear because we understand there is an infinite journey. And this life here that we're in is but one small part of it. And it is limited because we're in these bodies, because we have this density in the space, because we have this matrix. So we're in certain ways limited to certain things. But our awareness is not. And once that awareness goes through the awakening process and it expands again, why would it fear anything? I don't fear whatever could happen on any given day, but it's not because we're prepared and because we have a generator or because we have some food. No, it's not because of that. It's because whatever happens, my experience didn't begin here. My experience won't end here. And I have no inherently deep attachments to this. Well, if something is here now and it is pleasant to my experience, thank you. I welcome it. If it's gone tomorrow, that's totally fine. Something else will appear. I'm not attached to these things. I'm not the labels. Sure, if I go someplace and somebody assigns a label to me, I won't argue with every single person that assigns a label to me. Why would I do that? I'm not those labels. I'm not those labels. I'm not middle class. I'm not a podcaster or whatever people think. I am consciousness, having a human experience, right? So this is where this lands. And then there's a big difference. There's this little me. I'm going to show you this. The little me is just a human experience. And that little me, because it's attached to all the labels, it has fear of loss, fear of, uh, of, of pain, fear of death, and ultimately fear of fear. The little me, because it is solely focused on this little lifespan, because it's solely focused on the ego experience, it has a lot of these worries and fears and doubts because it thinks life begins with the physical body and it ends with the physical body. So naturally, it's all fear-driven. But the real me, 
the real me is I was, I am, I always will be. The real me is not a physical body. It is not an experience that is here that is inherently human. It's infinite awareness, spirit, consciousness. And it knows that whatever happens, that's not the end. It knows that all will be well. And when we get so pulled into the human experience and the hype and and the, you know, sort of the, the projections into what might happen and, and what this might mean and World War III and all of these things. When we, when we get so sucked in, we lose this connection, right? We forget who we truly are. And the little me, this me here, this little me needs to be worried, fearful, because if all it has is this brief human life, sure, then you have FOMO, you have fear of missing out, and you do YOLO, you only live once, you all you do all this crap. And 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 you, you know, it's sort of like this ironic experience. We were in downtown Nashville, but we, you know, we live in this area. We were in downtown Nashville the other day. And there's people standing in line, you know, Broadway, for those of you who don't know, it's like the main strip in Nashville. It's where all the entertainment is, is where everything happens. And people would stand in line for two, three hours to get into a certain place, two or three uh, hours. And then they'll be in that bar or, or, or club for an hour. And 45 minutes of that hour is spent by finding the best angles and the best lighting to take photos to put on their social media to make it appear as if it was such a wonderful day at that club. When really what happened was three hours and 45 minutes were spent on in, invested time to get that photo or those few photos. And maybe 15 minutes were spent on actually experiencing. And this is sort of how the little me operates. It is attached to all these things, the outcomes, the perceptions, the status, the money, the everything. But the real me, Real me is way more interested in the actual experience of what is here. The, the real me also remembers it as a co-creator in all of this. It gets to participate in creating experience. It gets to participate in creating the future. And because it knows it, it always was, it is, and it will be, how could there ever be any fear? And why, right? So here we are in this place of um, you know, so many projections of what could happen today or, or moving forward. It's a very intense year for humanity. It's a very intense period for our family naturally. And as such, we're, we're going through some very, very radical transformations. And naturally, we will do things to sort of mitigate our negative experiences, right? We will make sure that we're as protected as we can be and that we're doing as, as good as we can. But that should not be our main focus. Our main focus is to elevate our consciousness, is to use such times to realize that there's a part of us, the biggest part of us, that we put in the back and we forgot about it, and that it is time to bring it to the forefront. This is, this is actually what we did in this meditation, and this eclipse meditation was all about that. Now, it's, no, it's no ritual. It's no cult ritual, anything like that. It is to help people connect with that expanded consciousness, right? When we go through the reverse funnel and we experience who we truly are again. And this is what such days can be used for because there's heightened attention, there's heightened energy. And that's what these dark forces know. That's why they push certain things. That's why they, when, you, when they have their Super Bowls and when they have their Olympic Games and when they have their eclipses and eclipses, of course, that, that's at least something that we believe they can't steer, but who knows? Maybe they pushed the a moon there. Do we really know? I mean, honestly, do we know if the moon is a natural or artificial or artificial structure? You know, a lot of it points to the fact that it might be an artificial structure that was brought here. But what I mean is they use events that have mass attention and they can project something on these events where they harvest that attention, that energy. But so can you, right? So can you to use it for something good, to use it for something positive. You can tap into that mass energy 
and and envision something that is beautiful for the future. And this is where we are. We're we're taking back sovereignty over our thoughts and over our creative powers and over our consciousness. And everything that is happening in the world today, I, that's what I said years ago, we're turning this around. We're turning everything into a win. So there's a hype. Let's use the hype. There's mass attention. Let's use that. There's heightened awareness. Let's use that. We might reach more people. Let's turn every event into a win. Even if in the process, or especially if in the process of these events, people get hurt, especially then, let's honor them. People died when that bridge collapsed in Baltimore. Let's honor them by, by pulling something positive into the future from such experiences. Maybe, and I hope not, maybe, uh, you know, in, in places, not so pleasant things will happen today for people because of mass congestion and whatnot. Let's use this for something good. And let's begin more and more and more uh, uh, taking ownership of these things and stop putting that much uh, power into what these dark forces are doing. Because a lot of their power comes from our belief in their power. Yes, I'm all about exposing plans. Because when plans are, are exposed, that simply means now it's out in the open. You still going to do it? Are you still brave enough to go forward with this if people are watching and they know that you've planned something? Wonderful. So we just diffused something maybe. So I'm all for that. But our power, our vision, our imagination, it really needs to be invested in how we view our future individually and, of course, in, in har harmonizing the whole field. And we're doing this, friends. We're really, really doing this. I'm, I'm so inspired by the thousands of people that have already done this beautiful meditation, what they felt, what they've experienced. And, and, you know, there was one person that commented that they were afraid of meditating. And we don't, I don't even like the word meditation because it's so loaded because it is culturally and religiously loaded. And, and that's not what this is about. It's a journey. It's an inner journey. You can call it prayer. You can call it meditation. You can call it journey. You can call it quiet time. I don't care what you call it, but somebody commented that they were afraid for some reason, they were afraid of doing it. But this particular one, this meditation, they were inspired to do. And it changed their whole perspective. And now that person says they want to do it every morning. And that just that just makes my heart sing. I'm just grateful for that. So I really wanted to come on and say, please, please remember who you are. I'm not telling you don't be fearful. Remember who you really are. Look at that graphic again from the funnel. Remember that you are absolute pure consciousness. That's who you really are. And if you remember that, fear doesn't even uh, factor into the equation. Okay, so this is, to me, what the message of today is. And if people want to be outside and if they want to do and watch and look, man, do whatever you feel inspired to do. Trust your intuition. It will guide you perfectly. But mostly, remember who you are your beautiful expression of divinity, uh, you must be at least, you know, at least a spark of that which you came from and of that which you were created from. And so we are this divine spark. Let's live that and let's create from that place, my friends. Righty, that was my message for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please uh, look at this um, eclipse meditation in a high consciousness field that we did. If this inspires you, maybe that's what you're going to do today in a few hours as uh, we will experience a little bit of darkness out there. And then we'll see you again uh, tomorrow right here. It'll be fresh. We'll look at new things. We'll uh, expand our awareness more. We'll come together even closer. And we'll be on this journey together, my friends. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I so enjoy going through the live chat later um, after the live stream and reading from you, seeing you, seeing the seeing people showing up for years here. We so appreciate that. And it's so wonderful to have you on this journey. And we feel you. We feel you here with us. So thank you. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. And we'll be back with you again very, very soon.